Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Conversations on Conflict. I'm your host, Ben Kreitzberg, and today I am joined by the Executive Director of Community Mediation Maryland, Laura Charcutian, and I'm really excited to be talking to her today. Uh, we're going to be talking about a whole bunch of subjects, hopefully, but um, uh, one of the most in interesting things, I think, is going to be her, her work on the recent publication, uh, talking about how mediation can have really positive effects on the criminal justice system. Uh, so, Lord, thanks for joining me today. Uh, how are we Thank feeling? Thank you for inviting me. Of course, of course. Um, so, I, before we get into talking about, you know, your recent publications and the studies you've been doing, uh, showing the positive benefits of mediation, I want to take things back a little bit and ask you a little bit about you and your background and, um, you know, where your interest in not just community mediation, but conflict resolution came from. Wow. So, you know, I've been doing this for most of my adult life. I actually started um, my work in when I was in college in prisons with the Alternatives to Violence program, doing work in prisons. So um, I feel like that's a really good place to start. You know, folks who are locked up for, in a lot of cases, violence, um, you know, working with them to find realistic solutions that really decrease violence and decrease criminalization. And it was a, it was a really good place to start. Um, that career path because um, you know, I, got, I just got real clear about both what really works in very intense conflict situations, but also how do we use mediation? How do we use conflict resolution? How do we use these restorative approaches to essentially dismantle the mass incarceration system? And when I started this work, um, it was really in the heyday of the expansion of it was before folks were, I mean, some of us were questioning mass incarceration in the mm -hmm. mid nineties, but, um, but not in the way that we're fortunately seeing it now. Um, and of course, in that time frame, there's been devastating consequences for people, for their families, for communities. Um, but at the time that work in the prisons really shaped my view of what community mediation could do. Um, I eventually started the program in Baltimore City, the Community Mediation Center in Baltimore City. Um, I got my PhD in economics, uh, actually doing research on the impact of mediation, um, decreasing the intervention of police. Um, and since then I have done work growing the community mediation field in the state of Maryland, working in partnership with CRICMIC and the 15 other community mediation centers in the state. Um, and I have been able to continue to do um, economic research to quantify the impact of community-based mediation on essentially dismantling mass incarceration, the impact of community mediation to decrease call, repeat calls for service to police, to decrease recidivism, to decrease repeat use of um, criminal, uh, in this case, misdemeanor, the, the research we're about to talk about, the, mm -hmm. the use of criminal misdemeanor uh, charges to respond to what are really interpersonal conflicts. And so, um, so that's really the, the work that I've done for the last uh, 20, 25 years. And, um, and in that same time frame, you know, the, the grassroots movement has really grown across the state. And um, Crick Mix work has been been really crucial in all of that. So thrilled to be with with you here today. Um, but that's um, you know there's a lot more work to do. So I'm hoping that the research we're going to talk about today really supports continuing this effort. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. And you know, I in in my personal experiences, you know, when when I first came into the the field of mediation and I started to see you know some of the the positive effects that a, a process like mediation can have on um, you know, yes, the the um, the incarcerated population, and also just you know the community. Um, it's it's really awesome to be able to have someone like you in our field who's doing the you know that the behind the scenes work of gathering, doing the studies, gathering all the information to really show um, you know on paper the effects, right? Because you know I I can you know use my use my words and my experiences to talk about how you know positive mediation can be for folks. Um, but it's not until you know real studies are done and there's you know results and um, and statistics and all of that that goes into um, quantifying the information, like you said, and that's really important. Um, so, but you know, before you started doing the the work in prisons and college, like you said, um, what was conflict like for you? How, how where was the the ideas of conflict resolution um, and you know conflict education? Did you have any of that growing up? Uh, in, you know, middle school, high school? Um, you know, I think when I was in high school, it was sort of the very beginning of sort of some of the peer mediation programs. I like actually didn't 
um, participate in that. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I certainly have personal experiences, both uh, good and bad with conflict. Um, and it was getting clear about how do we have, um, in some of the personal experiences that I had in high school, um, getting clear about how do I stand up for, uh, very strongly for my principles and my beliefs, and how do I do that in a way that doesn't dehumanize other people? How do I do it in a way that mm -hmm. also honors the humanity, even in the people that I radically disagree with, right? Yeah. Um, and so, so I think to, you know, to some extent that shaped it, and I, I think that there was sort of the beginning of this, and certainly the community mediation movement had started, um, not to the extent that we have, we see it today, but it had started and, and then peer mediation was kind of just getting started in, in some of the high schools. And, um, but I, I, um, I would say that really it was in college and in, in prison um, mm -hmm. that, that I got a, that I got a, a much clearer sense of, of the direction. Gotcha. Yeah, it's always interesting to me to hear, you know, what kind of conflict education or background uh, people in our field have before they actually, you know, take their first step into it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, let's get into the to the publication, right? So um, when when was when was the publication released? I know I've read through it, but I'm not I don't recall when. It was just this fall. So okay. um, so it was actually research we did a few years ago, mm -hmm. um, and we uh, so Community Mediation Maryland worked with the Maryland Judiciary's Research Office, and and we got a grant from. Um, the State Justice Institute and the judiciary funded it to some extent. And so this was actually maybe five, six years ago. Um, we were collecting the data and developing the research and we had completed the research a few years back. Um, and then we, uh, you know, got around to putting it in the context of a publishable article. And it just, it actually just came out um, the fall of, of this year. So uh, maybe December of this year, actually. So very recently, um, and uh, we're, we're very excited to, to have it, to have it out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I was um, blown away by some of the, some of the findings that you had in, the, in that um, publication, you know, um, showing that mediation has really positive short-term and long-term effects you know, when, when we start introducing it into the criminal justice system, um, you know, uh, lower chances of requests for um, jury hearings, lower probability of probation and jail time, um, and then, you know, extreme, extreme effects on, uh, you know, not having cases not come back into the system within the following year afterwards. Um, so do, do you want to talk a little bit about some of the most, you know, profound findings that, that, you, that you saw? Well, I do, you know, first I want to talk about how we did the research, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. Sure, um, please, please, absolutely. Really, yeah, it's it's really important. I think, um, you know, I'm really committed to doing solid research with solid comparison groups. One of the things that people challenge a lot is like, well, of course, you know, you took folks who would have resolved their conflicts anyways, and you ran them through mediation, and then you compared them to people who didn't want mediation. So what's really important to know about this study, and this is part of why the study took so much time, effort, mm -hmm. money, um, is that what we did is we took a county, Washington County, where there was a, a community mediation program receiving referrals from the state's attorney's office, and then a similar county, Frederick County, right next door, where there wasn't a program. And so rather than comparing people who said yes to mediation to people who said no to mediation, mm -hmm. we took people who went through mediation, and then we went through the state's attorney's um, dockets in Frederick County, and we took the same, essentially the same characteristics. If that program in Washington County had been in place in Frederick County, who would have been referred to mediation? So we were taking people who were never offered mediation, not people who were offered it and said no, right? So mm -hmm. now we establish essentially this, this uh, comparison group um, that is kind of a sort of quasi-experimental. And then we take that and then we, um, uh, then we use propensity score matching to match up even further, it's a sort of a technical tool to match up even further um, the two groups. And so then we were really able to isolate what was the impact of the mediation process on these outcomes, as opposed to what was the impact of some other unobservable thing that made some people choose mediation and other people not. So that's really important sort of context. Um, and then what we found is really important because of course, what we found, as you said, is in the short term, mediation kept cases from going to uh, a jury trial, which cost the system a lot of money. They kept cases because they got resolved in mediation mm -hmm. instead yeah. of going to court. 
um, kept cases from going to uh, a conviction, which has all kinds of collateral consequences for somebody if they end up with a conviction. This is all short term. Kept cases from going to probation, to jail. So that's really important in terms of, again, the impact on the, the people's lives, um, the impact on the cost to the criminal justice system, the impact on not having somebody start down a path into the criminal justice system. Um, one of the other things that's really important is even a relatively sort of minor uh, misdemeanor conviction on somebody's record can keep somebody from being able to get a lot of jobs, right? So you, you know, if you're Absolutely, like working yeah. in daycare um, and you have an assault that might have been, you know, you shoved somebody that's technically an assault. Now you get convicted of that. That could mean you now lose your job in that daycare. So there's really significant consequences to folks, even on charges that might seem like they are relatively minor in the scheme of things. Yeah. But then what's even more important is, I think sometimes people look at, again, the misdemeanor cases and they say, okay, so maybe we make them go away with mediation, but could we have made them just go away with something else? Maybe, but what we find is that a lot of times when something ends up with a misdemeanor charge or with a police call for service, even if that would go away on its own, if you don't resolve the underlying issue that folks are having at that point in time, that issue will grow and it will be another assault. It will be another harassment charge. It will be another police call. And you know, in some cases it grows and it has really significant physical violence. Uh, we're resolving the underlying issue. And so that's gonna keep it from coming back in the long term. And so the other piece that our research did, and this is part of why it took so long, we had to follow the cases through, through their court case, but then we had to wait another 12 months and see what happened. To check back in, yeah. Yep. And we checked back in with the court data, not necessarily, we also called people, we did interviews with them and there's some interesting stuff there too. But this, this particular research, when we look at the court data outcomes, um, people were, the cases that went through mediation were five times less likely to be back in court and it's a statistically significant outcome to be back in court in the next 12 months with new criminal charges. And so that's really important because what it tells us is it's resolving those underlying issues and Absolutely. similar cases yeah. that don't resolve the underlying issues do come back with new charges. Yeah, I know. Absolutely. I, you know, that's, that's my favorite thing about mediation is that it's not just, you know, all right, what's the problem? Let's find a solution. It's all right. Why is there a problem? Right. Why is this problem existing? And then, like you said, right, trying to cut that conflict out at its root. Um, and I think that's, you know, that's definitely, you know, the most powerful thing about the, the process for me. Um, so I, let me ask you, now that you've, you know, you've, you've published these findings, there's, you know, clear indicators of, of the um, success that mediation can have on, on, in a lot of these cases. So why, what, what, are, what are some of the barriers that we see? Why is it not more widely used? Um, it's, it's a great question. I have, you know, uh, I have been, you know, one of the reasons that's been really important to me, uh, through my career, you know, people are like, it's interesting that you have a PhD in economics and you do mediation. Mm -hmm. Um, it's not a typical career path. Uh, but I, like, I, this is one of several, um, research studies that I've participated in, that I've led, that I've done, um, really trying to quantify the impact of community-based mediation on its impact on the criminal justice system. I've also also researched on the impact on families and, and family court and so on. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that it isn't, a t there's not, we need more, like we need more research that really demonstrates that, right? Like that's really important. Mm -hmm. And the good news is now that there is a reckoning with the, um, the, the horrifying use of, of uh, mass incarceration um, and a reckoning with the racial justice implications of that and a reckoning with all of this, like we need to keep the conversation going and we need to continue to bring these solutions to the table to say uh, when there's conflict, instead of criminalizing it, we need to find underlying solutions through mediation, through circles, through restorative approaches. Um, and this research, along with other research we've done, and along with more that really needs to be done, um, is, is helpful to, to do that. I think uh, that it's, um, I think that the reality is that we have systems, like once systems are in place, 
and they just moving. Difficult to change yeah, there's them. this inertia that sort of just keeps them going. And so it really does take, you know, the, having the research is important, but it takes, um, you know, visionaries within these organizations, you know, like I've worked with in the places where the state's attorney's office has effectively partnered with a community mediation center to make these referrals. I've worked with fantastic people, really visionaries, really challenging the system as it currently is. Um, there's other places where I think there's an interest in that kind of a partnership, but the system is just so just kind of churning ahead. Yeah. You really need the space and the time to say, okay, we're within this system, we're within this place that we just take cases and run them through a court process. Can we insert mediation so that the maximum number of cases that otherwise would go through the criminal justice system are ending up in mediation instead? And that's really the work that's that's left to be done. And it's the work that CRICMIC is doing. It's the work that we continue to support for the 15 community mediation centers, uh, 16 now around the state. Um, and, and we'll continue to do that work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. It's definitely just getting your foot in the door in those systems to, you know, start hopping in, trying to take cases, and then being able to have folks like you doing the research to then back up all, all the findings and the results. Yeah. So do you do you feel like, is there any, I know you, you said that you, you work with a lot of fantastic people in these organizations. Um, do you feel like there's there's any other pushback against using mediation and in, in you know, to bring mediation in, into these systems that, um, you know, is, is more than just sort of structural? Um, you know, certainly there's, there's folks who, um, uh, you know, there's people in decision making places, who I think often have, um, you know, and again, it's different across the state, different parts of the country, but there are, there's certainly people still in decision-making places who have more of a punitive, um, you know, uh, criminalization kind of orientation yeah. to how they view the behavior that could otherwise go to mediation. And so there is a, a, a philosophical kind of conversation there, policy-based conversation. And I think in those conversations is where this research becomes really important to say, look, you could keep criminalizing this stuff. You could keep trying to punish, but look at what happens. Those folks are coming back. And the folks yeah. who had a chance to resolve the underlying issues aren't. And so I think it's a mix of um, making sure that we're pushing back on the narratives about the need to punish and the need to, to criminalize conflict. Um, it, it's pushing back on that. And um, then once you get folks, because this goes it was like, once you have the yes, then it's like staying in it long enough to really change the systems just because systems don't, you know, bureaucracy doesn't like to change. So, um, so I think it's a combination of both. Mm -hmm. And, and do you feel like you've seen a really, you know, a really, um, large change from, from your beginnings, um, in this field to where we are now, right? Do you feel like there's, you know, um, as much change as you were, as you'd hope would, would happen by this time in terms um, of mixing mediation uh, into so the I, systems? I, as much as I would hope, no. I mean, like I would hope that I would have hoped that by now, you know, the vast majority of of uh, conflict would be in mediation, and and almost none of it would it would end up in the in the criminal justice system. So, mm -hmm. um, but 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 there's definitely been a shift, and there's a shift that's that's very hopeful, and there's a shift that I think uh, we're headed in the right direction, and we just need to keep pushing. Yeah, absolutely. So so let me ask you uh, for for folks that might be watching this that. Um, you know, might not know too much about the the movement of mediation or you know the um, the, the process even itself. Where where would you direct them to go educate themselves more on the on the the whole process of, of mediation, community mediation, and, and otherwise? Well, certainly the CRICMIC website. I think that uh, I assume that you're going to like run that across the the banner here. The, oh yeah, the, yeah. Well, yeah. So that. our website and. There will also be information for anyone who wants to read your uh, the publication. All of that will be in the description below as well. Excellent. And if you can also add uh, the community mediation website, mdmediation.org. And there you can find a lot on the sort of philosophy, the approach to community mediation. You can find a lot of my other research, both mine and other people's quantitative research on the impact of mediation, um, dismantling mass incarceration. You can find out about our work 
um, not just in the context of uh, criminal justice reform, but also in the context of education and special education, IEP facilitation and family mediation in schools, um, both uh, restorative approaches in schools, um, as well as um, in the district court and uh, you know all kinds of other places. Uh, there's videos there, you can watch mock mediations, short ones, long ones. So um, there's a lot out there. And, um, and I think you know, the one other thing I just would mention is you know, some people, I think pe community peacemaking is everybody's responsibility. Like all of us are potential mediators, all of us are potential users of mediation, but whatever, whether we decide that the thing we're going to do for community peace is resolve our own conflict maybe with mediation or if it's going to be our lifelong sort of career focus passion volunteer effort or something in between and i think that people who um uh you know believe that this is the way things should be done um can talk to their policymakers can talk to people there, you know, the state's attorney's office, people who are running for state's attorney, people who are in positions of leadership in the police department, like, to, you know, and say, like, how are you incorporating um, these conflict resolution services that can keep people in conflict from ending up in the criminal justice system? Um, so there's, there's advocacy roles, there's volunteer roles, there's all kinds of ways to get involved. And I encourage folks, big or small, whatever's right for you in your life right now, um, you know, like you could be part of moving this forward. I could not agree with that was very well, but I could not have said that better myself. Um, and for anybody watching this in, in Montgomery County who, who wants to reach out and, uh, you know, learn more about how you can get involved, um, you know, locally, con you can contact our center, you can give us a, a call or send us an email, all of our contact information will be there in the description below. Um, Lori, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate it. It's always great talking to you. Um, is there anything else you want to say to, to the viewers before we head out? Just thank you. Uh, really appreciate the opportunity. Of course, of course. All right. Thanks again, everyone who tuned in to this episode of Conversations on Conflict. Again, I'm your host, Ben Kreitzberg, uh, and I've been joined by uh, Lori Charcuti and the Executive Director of Community Mediation Maryland. Um, you can find all the information that we've talked about in the description below, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening, and I'll see you next time. Take care.